Welcome to Refashion Talk Live. I'm Laura Madden. If you're new here, um, Refashion Talk Live is an IG Live series um, that I started while being homebound. And Refashion is this process of our reimagination and reinvention of our relationship to fashion and using fashion for good. So a lot of what I talk about here is sustainable fashion, not only sustainable fashion, but it happens to be one of the ways that you can partake in using fashion for good, for sure. So thanks for being here. Hi guys, hey Sam, how are you? Hi Dr. Gilda, what's up? So, so much of this um, I talk about because it is has been part of my own journey. It's something that's helped me using fashion as a tool. And when I say fashion, I mean like bottom line, getting dressed, just getting yourself dressed in something that you love, that something that looks and feels good to you. And I know like looking quote unquote good is subjective, but if you dress yourself in a way that feels good to you, then I guarantee you it's gonna lift your mood and you're gonna feel really damn good about yourself. So I've been preaching that, I know like crazy, I share my daily looks and my stories every day, I know they're nothing special, but I just wanna demonstrate I'm doing it, I get dressed every day because it feels good. It is legit part of my mental health strategy and it helps me to, I guess, keep my head on straight and um, at least feel like I have some sense of control right now. And it helps me to, you know, like sets the tone for your day or my day. And it helps me feel like I'm like the leader of my life in some strange way. So I'm curious, hey Casey, how are you? Casey, I'd love to take a tour of your closet. Ha, well, <laughs> spoiler alert, it, this is about it. It's There's not much here, although it is, packed, jam packed with clothes. So maybe we'll do that sometime. That would be fun. Actually, we could do that. We could do that. It would be quick. It would be short and sweet, but I do have a lot of stuff in here to talk about. So, hey, Catherine, Catriona. Hey guys. Okay. So let's see. Also been sharing lives on my, uh, uh, art page refashioned art if you are familiar if you follow me there I will be doing a live art demo today pretty much right after this about noon So make sure you check me out at refashioned art and so I've just been doing these live demos I know the video quality is horrible. I apologize for that, but I'm doing it anyway. I've been asked to do them. It's a great it was a great suggestion um, from the people who suggested it. So I will be doing a live art demo. Also want to share more fun than the art demo today at five. I'm going to host a happy hour, which is one of my favorite things to do. Um, but I'll be hosting it virtually. Of course, it is actually going to be a very short, concise happy hour, but I'm going to do an art tour in my home. So Casey, I won't do a closet tour today, but I am going to do an art tour in my home. And I'm probably gonna do like maybe four paintings and I'm just gonna go around my house and talk about four of the paintings I have in my home that I have created for the very walls of my own home. Uh, that, we'll see how that goes. I guarantee you I will have a cocktail and a cocktail dress. Makes for a party, right? I'll have a cocktail and a I will be in a cocktail dress. I guarantee you that. So 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Let me know if you have any questions about that. But um, my cameraman, I husband, is uh, on board. So I have to take advantage of every moment I get because uh, that's not often. So 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That will be on my art page at Refashioned Art. We are doing an art tour in my home. And it'll just be like a happy hour. So, you know, make sure you grab a cocktail. And um, it's gonna be quick, so I want you to get on five. I don't want you to miss it. So let me see. Something I wanna share really quickly in my post today, I shared um, a little bit about why I've been getting on doing lives, and I've shared many reasons, I know. You're probably tired of hearing about the many reasons why I do this, but uh, the main thing I really wanted to focus on was vulnerability, and that's a huge reason why I get on here and do these lives. And in my post today that I put in my feed, um, it's kind of like there's no hiding behind any pretty pictures, which you post a great picture in your feed or your stories and it 
could have been edited. There's great lighting, there's great clothes. You have so much control over what goes into that pretty picture. So the live is like, there's no hiding behind that pretty picture. It is you, it is real, it is raw. I mean, uh, this is the real me. This is what I really look like. This is uh, where I live. And what comes out of my mouth is, what I say is what I really mean. There's no editing, there's no filtering. And that's what I love so much about it, because it is scary. And I know there's plenty of you out there that feel the same, but it can be really scary to get any type of live television, you know, because it's all out there. Again, there's no editing, there's no filters, it's all out there. And so that's why I forced myself to do this because it, for me, it's like getting over like these perfectionistic tendencies that, um, and, and I guess uh, bottom line, a major limiting belief of mine. I used to have a really active YouTube channel. It's still up there, you can check it out. It's really silly, the videos are horrible, but I love doing those videos on YouTube, but I stopped because I realized how crappy they were. And I just couldn't get the lighting right. I couldn't get the acoustics right. I couldn't get the backdrop right. Um, but, but still, I had so much to say. And so I really like, um, you know, I kind of squashed that passion for getting on and speaking and speaking to a camera and sharing. So I've got, I'm getting over this limiting belief that, you know, a video has to be perfect. It has to look perfect and sound perfect to be effective or encouraging or empowering to the viewer. And, and I, and I believe that And part of this is my own experiencing my own experience watching other people's lives. You, of course you've noticed everybody, it seems like is doing lives and I, I have been learning so much from so many awesome people on here. I almost feel like I'm in school, but at the end of the day, I'm really not looking at the video. I'm not looking at the quality of the video. I'm not looking at what they're wearing. I'm not looking really at like how they're sounding. I'm, I'm, I'm focused on the content. What are they sharing? What is of value? What is coming out of their mouth? And I realized, wow, I'm learning a lot and I'm getting so much out of this. And so that proved me wrong. A video does not have to look perfect. It does not have to be perfect to be effective and empowering to someone out there. So I encourage you to do it. Um, if you have something to say, I encourage you to share it. There's nothing like getting your message across. Um, and you know, influencing like video, especially live video, because it shows who you really are. It really does. So thanks for being here. I know these aren't perfect, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm here and I'm doing it anyway. So I like to talk about what I'm wearing today. Um, <laughs> yep, I've got the gold on again. I love gold jewelry. It's one of those things that just like wakes me up. And so I've been upcycling a lot of jewelry. I've been wearing a lot of it in my photos that I've been sharing and I'm obsessed with upcycling. I'm obsessed with making something beautiful out of something that wasn't, out of something broken and old. I'm just obsessed with, you know, giving things a new life. You know, just that whole circularity, just like with secondhand fashion, upcycling jewelry. It's like you are contributing to, yes, sustainable fashion. You're also contributing to the circular economy, which is so healing for our planet because we're conserving resources and we are reducing waste. So um, I, I can't exactly say that I upcycled this jewelry and these earrings. Oh my God, how awesome. So I, I didn't exactly make these things. I did make the bracelets. I didn't make these, but I did fix them. Hey Carson, I did fix these things. I mended them. The, all of these things were broken. Love this. All of these things were broken and I did fix them. So I do feel good about at least giving them a second life. They could have, you know, went straight in the trash, but love, aren't these so cool? I just love anything somewhat mod or architectural and I just love these long lines of these. So um, that's what I'm wearing. Uh, this is, uh, a blazer vest. I love this. This is like one of my favorite things. It's definitely, it definitely was an investment piece. It is Alexander Wang and it's just like goes with so many things. I've worn this a million times. Well worth every penny. Again, this was an investment piece. And um, when you break down the cost per wear, this thing did not cost that much because it is so versatile. It is such a multitasker. I've worn it so many different ways and I've worn it so many times. So highly recommend investment pieces that are multitaskers that you are going to wear many times over long term. 
Then I have a bathing suit on. Yeah, I guess this is pure Arizona style because it's gonna be 100 degrees here today. I have a bathing suit. This is by a brand Aligned Together. I will put that in my notes when I post this. And uh, they are a sustainable fashion brand and they make bathing suits out of, they recycle plastic. And so they, are, they have some fabulous styles. So this is the um, bathing suit you can't really see, but it's got this cool little mesh cut out. And then I'm wearing a jean skirt and um, vintage belt, of course. But yeah, gold jewelry, which is my everyday, again, wellness tool. It just makes me feel so darn good. Um, and then, you know, things that are very mix and matchable. Huge fan. So that's that. Um, guys, please send me your questions. I really do dictate much of what I talk about on here. So um, according to your questions, because I want it to be of value to somebody somewhere out there, um, send me your questions. I'm loving it. Uh, last week, somebody asked me a really good question that I, um, I got a lot of comments about. So I'm glad I answered this one. Somebody asked, you know, what, what, what is my advice for somebody who wants to start shopping thrift stores or secondhand? And number one, know your style, know your style. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a stylist, but great opportunity to hire a stylist, even for one session to help you get clear on your style, what works for you, what you're actually going to wear and some items, key items to look for and maybe key items to get rid of that might be taking up valuable space in your wardrobe closet real estate. So know your style. It's going to help um, eliminate unnecessary impulse buys and it's going to help you really keep your blinders on to focus on finding the items that you really going to wear for the long hair, long haul. Best for the environment and best for your budget too. So, and it just feels good to buy clothes that you actually love and make use of. Just feels good. So know your style. Very important question. Um, somebody asked, and the question is, do you see this pandemic directly influencing fashion? If so, how? Well, I most definitely see fashion, uh, uh, I definitely see COVID-19 influencing fashion and it, it already has been. Uh, if you followed me at all, if you're reading my post, I always, or, or I, I'm very often will share that a, uh, remake here on Instagram, it's Remake Our World. It's an organization, a nonprofit organization I work very closely with. They have a petition going on right now. It's called the Pay Up Petition. And so they are, they are pressuring clothing brands to pay up. And so what's happening in the fashion industry is that tons of brands, mainly fast fashion, some department store brands, have decided that they are not gonna pay the factories. Now these are orders they already placed, the work has already been done. They decided they're not gonna pay the factories. So the factories are not paying the workers. And like I'm talking millions of garment workers, factory garment workers all over the world are not getting paid and they are literally like screwed. They are like not gonna be able to eat because these people already live in poverty. And majority of them barely, barely make living wage. So uh, unfortunately, COVID-19 is already affecting fashion. Hey guys, thank you for joining. Type your questions in please. Use that question mark if you'd like to say something. Use that little question mark button at the bottom of the screen. So what's happening? Remake has this um, pay up petition. They are, they actually have already been successful in getting a number of brands to pay the factories so that the garment workers can get paid, but there are still a number of them that are simply not paying and this is not okay. Now, a lot of this goes back to fast fashion and I have touched on fast fashion here. I've touched on, you know, uh, I, I've uh, suggested, you know, ban fast fashion, ditch fast fashion, but I really haven't tackled this head on. And there are a number of reasons that I haven't. Um, I, I've kind of like skirted around the issue of fast fashion with it, without going into specifics and partly because I get very heated around this. It's, it's a really disgusting thing that's happening in fashion. Uh, if you're not sure about fast fashion, it, uh, brands like H&M, brands like Zara, Mango, uh, Express, just to name a few. So the clothing is trendy, sometimes cute, poorly made most all cases and it's cheap it's extremely affordable I will give them that it's affordable fashion but that affordability comes at a cost someone somewhere 
is paying the cost. One, our environment. Two, the garment workers in the factories that make our clothes. They are barely being paid, guys. And that's why we are getting these good deals in fast fashion, you know, brand, with fast fashion brands. So I get very heated about this. It's a majorly loaded topic, but it just, in the year 2020, fast fashion, this should not exist. It is not okay. And it's really kind of mind blowing that as a society, we've let this happen. So what is the deal with fast fashion? A large part, it is the speed. It's fast. So these factories are like, they are cranking out new styles, new garments so quickly that the garment workers are pressured to working like 10, 12, 14 hours, like crazy hours without overtime pay and a lot of times without fair pay to begin with. So, but these brands, these fast fashion brands are, you know, they're putting pressure on the factories. They are undermining them cost wise. And so the factories, they are in these many of these developing countries like Bangladesh, Indonesia, um, they are, you know, they want the work, they want the business. So they are putting that pressure, they're transferring that pressure onto the garment workers and they, they're not paying them. There is abuse, there's slave labor. It's just so disgusting and it's extremely commonplace in the fashion industry and sadly it's not common knowledge i had no clue about this until i watched a documentary called true cost if you want to look them up here on instagram it's at true cost movie i will put that in the notes i'm going to share that in my stories today as well so you guys can all see it hopefully if you haven't seen it you will watch true cost it changed my life but it blew my socks off because i had no clue that there was anything anything to do with fashion but beauty beautiful pretty things that made me feel good well no i might feel good but then there are people all over the world that are paying the price so you know it's the low wages it's the speed um it's it's violent when you think of what these garment workers are put through to produce our clothes it's violent and a lot of you i'm sure are sitting at home saying well why the hell are they doing it why are they signing up for this well, the problem is in a lot of these developing countries, there is so much poverty and there's so little paying work. That's like known as a good job. I mean, below living wages, abuse and all still, that is known as reliable work in these countries. So these people are not about to just let this go. But again, I highly recommend you check out Remake. They, their website is awesome. It's remake.world. Their website is remake.world. They actually have very short story uh, documentaries. They've gone to factories all over the world and they have actually filmed factory garment workers and um, they're truth tellers. And so it really puts it out there. You can see firsthand what is happening. You can hear firsthand what is happening. So highly recommend you check out Remake. Uh, their films are free. Check them out on YouTube. They have a lot of content on YouTube, but um, they are pulling the wool off our eyes so we can see the truth of it. Um, yeah, so that's fast fashion. And that is unfortunately one of the ways that COVID-19 has changed the industry. I don't know how much longer this is going to go on for, but you know, a lot of these factories are going to shut down if these brands do not pay. So who's going to make your clothes? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who they're going to find or who they expect to make their clothes. So that's one thing. But one thing we can all do as consumers is to sign the pay up petition. The other thing as consumers, and I know I talk about this a lot, and I just want to be clear on what I mean by our responsibility as consumers. Hey, so, um, a lot of this is that production follows demand. Production will follow demand. And with the prices of fast fashion being so low, it makes it very easy for people to buy in excess and to buy very quickly. People are buying and disposing of clothes very quickly in large part because these items are so cheap. When the cost is so low, it's hard to value something. So the consumer, plays a large role in this whole issue with fast fashion. For the most part, we are consuming, buying fashion at such a rate 
that then, you know, these brands are putting pressure on the factories to produce faster and quicker. The factories are putting the pressure on the garment workers to work around the clock below living wages, um, below minimum wage in many cases. And again, there's abuse, there's harassment. And so that's why it's so important to understand that we as consumers, we vote with our dollars. We as consumers, we have so much power over what is happening in this world, especially with the fashion industry and what the future of the fashion industry will look like. So please everybody, just know that every dollar matters. Put your dollars, be responsible, be conscious, and be, um, I guess, aware of the brands that you are supporting with your dollars, with your purchases. And, um, you know, it can be as simple as a Google search away to find out if a brand is responsible, you know? So, and if you need help finding resources, again, please check out Remake at Remake Our World here on Instagram, or you can DM me. I will be glad to send you, um, hey guys, just wanna check, any questions? Did you see we both have the same dress from Goodwill? I messaged you about it. Thank you, Casey, I will check. I haven't seen your message yet. What dress is that? Okay, got no sound. Hi, Casey, so can you guys hear me? Somebody wrote in they have no sign. Sam, if you're still on, I'm sure you're not 25 minutes later, but uh, if you're still on, let me know. Can you hear me? Is there sound? Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, my volume might be down. Oh, let's see. I don't know. Anyway, that is the deal with fast fashion. And again, you can see I get a little heated. Um, it's just such a loaded topic and it is a really disgusting part of fashion today. But again, we have so much power of consumers, so please do not ever discount that. Where you put your dollars, where you choose to spend your dollars is so, so powerful. Um, the other thing, a lot of these fast fashion brands, and this is the last I'll say about that, I promise, and I'm gonna wrap, but a lot of these fast fashion brands are cutting corners when it comes to environmental standards and practices. They are throwing the wastewater right out into rivers that would otherwise be clean. Uh, they are burning excess leftover fabric. They are burning scraps. They are throwing fabric scraps right into trash, into landfill. There are other ways. There are so many other ways and there actually are so many brands that are doing fashion well, that are taking responsibility. You know, environmentally, they are taking responsibility by taking care of their garment workers, only working with factories uh, that take care of garment workers, pay their garment workers well. Um, or, you know, there are brands that are that have opened their own factories to make sure they have control over the care of the garment workers and the care of the environment at the other end of production. So, um, and, I, and I'm, I hate numbers and I hate going into facts, but 13 million tons of textiles are thrown into landfill every year in the U.S. alone. Now, that's not just the problem with fast fashion factories throwing out um, like excess fabric and waste. Uh, a lot of that is at the consumer level. People are throwing their unwanted clothing into the trash. Please, please, please do not ever throw your clothing into the trash. Give it to a friend or give it to somebody who does upcycling or you can recycle it. There are places that do uh, textile recycling. Please DM me if you need a resource, ATRS is a resource that I use. They have bins, uh, donation bins all over the country, US, if you're in the US and they actually do recycle textiles. So let me know if you need a resource, if you need that resource, but please do not throw your garments, unwanted garments, damaged garments, whatever, please do not throw it in the trash. It's very damaging for the environment for that stuff to go into landfill. Once it start, starts breaking down, we definitely don't want that. So fast fashion, if I leave you, you can hear me. Great, thank you so much, October Born Styling. I'm guessing you're referring to sound, hopefully. So fast fashion, anyone on here have any questions about fast fashion? Anyone on here want to, say that 10 times fast, anyone on here want to um, have a dispute about fast fashion? Anyone here in favor of fast fashion, please type it in the comments now or forever hold your peace. Um, but I cannot stress enough the importance of uh, ditching fast fashion. Do not support it, please. Uh, the only time I would purchase something from like say Zara or H&M, if at all, is if it's secondhand. And reason being, if it has a place in your wardrobe, by all means buy it. If you're gonna wear it, love it, and take care of it, by all means buy it 
and I do believe it's better in your closet than in a landfill. So that's my spiel about fast fashion. Garment workers are getting screwed. The environment is totally getting trashed by these brands. And again, if you need resources, please DM me. I would be super happy to send those over to you. Um, and that's about it, guys. I always seem to talk longer than I say I am going to, but I'm long-winded. So uh, apologies for that. If you want to join me for my live art demo, it's at Refashioned Art. That's my art page. At noon, I'll see you for a live art demo. It's going to be quick today, short and sweet, I promise, quicker than this. And see you at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for my live art tour in my home. Send me questions if you have any specific questions, but um, it's going to be fun. Cocktail dress and cocktail will be on. Promise, promise, promise. So, I'll see you either at noon or 5 p.m. Send me your questions, guys. And oh, hey there. See you next time. And um, stay well.